Um, as you guys know, these are some strange times that we are living in. And the things that are happening right now, quite frankly, they are keeping me filled to the brim with topics to cover. We're going to examine a textbook case of what toxic matriarchy looks like um, and when a society or a community is under matriarchal rule, the devastation, the chaos, the pure judgment and peril that comes along with it when it is left unchecked. So essentially, my thesis tonight, I am going to be discussing matriarchy using some very real life examples. If you guys haven't noticed, I, I am compiling a glossary of words and terminology and a lexicon to help you understand these concepts. So you've heard the term a ratchet tag. You may have heard the term, you know, unbiblical bootleggers or godless goons or, you know, the melanin messiah. You can add purposeful patriarchy and you can add matriarchal squalor to the lexicon. And when you think of these terms, they are going to help you understand the concepts behind them. So walk along with me up to the Midwest section of our nation. And we're going to peep in on the nasty, the, the, the disrespectful, uh, downright criminal behavior of East Point, Michigan mayor, Monique Owens. You guys take a listen at this. Hearing of the public is now open. I'm here in support of Councilman Curley. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna stop you right there, or we're gonna we're gonna stop the council meeting because I'm not gonna let you speak on something that has to do with a police, but the you police know and. What I was going to say. Mayor, you I have no idea speak. what I was going to say. Well, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let her speak, but I'm okay. Hold on, we're gonna have order. But if you're speaking on something that has to do with something that has to do with a police report, we're gonna respect the people that's in that. Point of order, Mr. Albright, regarding in, uh, interruption of. Someone speaking in. And I'm going to have a point of order and I'm going to talk over you. This is going to be one of those well, meetings you know, I've never seen before. You're not going to disrespect people that have you things going without on. You not knowing what I was going to hey, okay, well, talk I, about public things. She can talk about public, public things, public. but I'm giving her a warning, just like we have always give people warnings before they spoke on certain things. That's inappropriate. And I have First Amendment rights as well. I would like to have our city attorney uh, give the opinion about people coming up and speaking uh, um, at the hearing of the public, if you could do that. Uh, city attorney. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, members of the public have a right to address uh, the city council, or they may speak individually about a member of the council as well. But I also have my First Amendment right. And if you're saying something out of line as my First Amendment right, whether a mayor or not a mayor, I'm going to speak. And though I, I think I've met you a couple of times, Harvey, but I really don't know you. But I do know a lot of people that do know you. They have always admired you. They've respected you for all your years of community involvement, political service. I think it's ridiculous that you're now in this position of defending yourself against really what I consider to be outrageous claims. You're not going to sit I here and assault stop. me, lady I never met. I don't so call good. my name because I don't know I what book you're reading and, and I don't care. If I am a person, a victim, you're not going to use that platform to re-victimize anyone. And no one in this audience is going to do that. Point to no order. woman and to no person. Anyone else would like to speak at this time? If there is a police report out or something that you've seen, you let that person and that victim and that person who's fighting that deal with the courts. You don't use that platform to victimize a person that felt like it was assaulted or fearful of their life. You don't use that platform for that. Nobody will. No one. As long as I'm mayor, you don't use that platform to re-victimize anyone, whether it's a guy, woman, or anybody. That is not the place. Now, if someone wants to talk about what's going on in this city and not someone's personal business, the hearing of the public is now open. Karen Moragin, East Point resident. This is ridiculous. There's no reason for this. We have First Amendment rights. Part of our First Amendment right clearly states we have the right to redress our government without fear of reprisal or retaliation. If you can't take the criticism, you should not be mayor. Enough is enough. 
This you is a personal you. matter. It's not about criticizing. You can criticize my policy. Stop you stop it. it. You, you stop violating it. You're violating my first And you're violating right. my rights as a person that can you call the police and use the police department, the police department for my rights. If someone chooses to call you the police, that is their right. You don't victimize them for that. You are out of line. You are out of line. You are out of line. You're out of point of order. You're out of line. Point of order. You are out of line. You are out of line. Now, do you want to stand there and talk about your cats and your dogs in the community, but you won't talk about you don't me? Don't interfere. Okay. With my free speech. And you don't I interfere with my free to speech. Criticize. You don't get to with that one minute of reprisal or what else do you want to talk about? Would you like the news crew to come out? The news already comes out. That's it. I guess we're done. Thank you very much for Go ahead. this. Sit East Point's mayor went on a tirade, and Fox 2's Dave Kinchin is live to tell us all about it. What happened, Dave? Well, this was a very heated meeting that happened two days ago, and East Point residents, while well, they're still talking about it, taking it all in, and they're wondering what's going to happen next. So you can never say the mayor disappointed you. You all disappoint me. East Point's mayor putting her constituents on blast. So don't blame the mayor for your city. Blame yourself because it's deep rooted. Mayor Monique Owens closed the January 17th council meeting with the 15 minute fireworks filled finale after starting out with remarks honoring Dr. Martin Luther King for his teachings on love and unity. Owens making it clear she's sick of taking unfair criticism for what residents call a rise in crime. It's a little rough. It's getting a little rough. I don't know why it didn't used to be. A puppet doesn't say anything. They're moved by whatever goes on. We showed video of the tirade to East Point residents. Many are stunned. That was a surprising that um, Bear did all that. She was kind of rough. I mean, I, I mean, I, I thought she would have spoke a little better. You were shocked by that. Yeah, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that until you just told me. I didn't even know that was the mayor talking like that. Owen said she's been subjected to a double standard as the first black woman elected mayor of East Point and referenced an alleged incident with a fellow council member. The same rules and the standards apply to different people. That's not love. I had someone up here that actually got in my face and I have to make a police report put a PPO out on that person. If you can't respect the people that lead your community, how do you expect people to respect your property, respect your car, respect your families? And you can't even respect mine. We're here at City Hall. Let's see if we can find the mayor and talk to her about those comments. All right, well, City Hall's closed for the day. Let's step by the mayor's house and see if we can get answers there. Okay, so now we're here at the mayor's house and uh, we'll see if we can have a chat. Madam Mayor, it's Dave Kinchin from Fox 2. Can we have a word? Well, no luck finding the mayor, and we do want to point out many residents we talked with say they understand where Owens is coming from. She kind of has a point. If everybody as a community can come together. Woo! <clears throat> I know there was a long clip, but sometimes I kind of have to let you guys see it and take it all in so you can just understand the full perspective and scope of what uh, we are dealing with. So in this clip, uh, you, you, we start out by you seeing this older woman, right? She opens up and she just begins to speak. You know, if you've ever been to a city council meeting, they open up the floor for a public comment. I think I've done it maybe once or twice. And so it's very intimidating because it's this room full of people sometimes, um, if it's something really important going on. And then you have you know, the, the city council sitting there and you're kind of just standing up there um, on the microphone. So she begins to speak. And before she can even get the words out, what does this Arachitane do, right? She, she tries to shut down the lady before she's even had a chance to get two words out, right? She just flats out. She starts threatening and acting all kinds of respect, uh, disrespectful and just, just acting ugly. And I don't know who this woman thinks she is and who told her uh, that her boo-boo don't stink, but somebody has involved in this Arachitang to where she thinks that she can speak to these people like they are children. Y'all, what you just witnessed, this right here, this is Big Mama. This is Big Mama right here. This, this is that black girl magic, who gon' check me boo, yes, queen with the K, toxic, matriarchal cesspool of squalor. That's what this is. 
And when I tell you I cannot stand listening or seeing this type of behavior because it puts me in a very bad headspace. Um, this, this is the type of foolishness. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. That has raised three generations of emasculated, unmarriageable men and the same type of women that has raised these rebellious, insufferable, unmarriageable women. These are their mamas. Okay, so if Papa was a Rolling Stone, then Big Mama's the bottom broad, right? She is the one that is always highly abrasive. She don't know how to talk to people. She only got one level, and it's 10, right? This is the matriarchal squalor that these cities are in, and they are, people voted for this. And do you want to know why? They voted for this because it's familiar to them. So you've got, it's two sides of this issue. You have those who were raised in this matriarchal cesspool of squalor. This is, they're the third generation. They're just now, was it the, the Gen Zs that are 18 and up? This is normal to them, right? Then you have your millennials. They were raised because Gen X is their mamas, right? Um, and then you've got those geriatric Gen Xers, this is this is them. They were raised by the baby boomers who started all of this. And so you have two aspects of this. You have people who vote for this because this is familiar to them. They like, oh, this is my mama, this is my auntie, this just I know this. And those are those are the black bread ones. And then on the white side, they vote for this because of white guilt. Right. They've been guilted into saying, you know, you're just against diversity and equity and inclusion and it's our time. So you need to vote for this, not because this person has demonstrated that they're qualified. They've done nothing other than show up and be black. They're the first. It's a vanity metric. So you got white people who vote because they're like, you know, if I don't, I'm going to get I'm not going to be, you know, with the in crowd and I won't be viewed as, you know, I'll be viewed as old fashioned. So let me just go ahead and vote. And then the black ones, they like, oh, well, you know, that's that's just how Mika is. You know, they, they, they it's familiar to them. They've they've been forced to accept this because this this torment and torture, it is par for the course in the black breeding construct of matriarchal blackness. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. This is, this is part of the behavioral news that they put around your neck and you must bow down. Oh yes, you must be quiet when, when they're talking um, because you don't have your own opinions. You don't have your own thoughts. You just stand there and you listen to me, the matriarch, because... I'm big mama and I'm on top, right? What is, what is going on in the mind of the people who voted for this? I'm going to show you what's going on in the minds of the ones who voted for this or who support this. They really don't believe in holding people accountable and they were raised by this woman. I'm going to keep saying it. It's your Kirk Franklin's who, when you have to bring these women and hold them accountable and bring their actions to account, they're the ones, particularly the males that say, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we can't, we can't say nothing about black women. We gotta, we gotta protect her at all costs because you know, she's the queen and you know, we just, no matter what his own mama, who to this day won't tell the truth about who his daddy is and lied with two pieces of DNA evidence that proved that she lying. She will stand there and look you in the face and be like, it ain't true. It's some, the blood is wrong. Somebody must have conspired and gave him a blood transfusion and put somebody else's blood in his body. I know y'all retrieved this blood from this man and it's verified it belongs to him, but that DNA test, that is wrong. These are the people, they were raised by this big mama. I want to go ahead and let you see something else. Look at this. We do want to point out many residents we talked with say they understand where Owens is coming from. She kind of has a point. If everybody as a community can come together. I wanted to play that again because 
that's two men. You had an older one and the younger one, and you saw it correctly. The first man in the clip, before, when they were kind of showing to him her behavior, he kind of laughed it all because to him, you know, this is just an everyday Wednesday in Mayberry, right? Like his response, I remember, um, he was like, you know, she was kind of rough. But his response, he wasn't really appalled. He wasn't, he didn't demonstrate like, oh my goodness, that, that type of behavior is unacceptable. This, this is the mayor? He was just so cool and laid back about it. He wasn't appalled at all. And do you want to know why? He's been around women like this all his life, right? This behavior is, this is his sister. This is his mama. This is his auntie, his girlfriends, maybe even his wife, if he has one. I don't know. He's an archetype, right? We're just using him as an example. This man laughed it off because this type of energy is a staple in his world. And then you had the younger boy, the younger gentleman. This is literally all he knows. So to him, this is normal. So what else did you expect him to say? He's been around women like this all his life. And so he's been trained to agree no matter what, right? Because he knows failure to agree and see her as, well, you know, she kind of has a point. You know, he knows that that makes his life miserable. And so he's been under the same, he, the same room with this, this type of a ratchet tank energy. He already knows that to get peace, and to have his just basic needs met and to keep her off his back, he just has to cooperate and agree because there's no winning an argument against her. So it's like, you can't beat him, join her. Like in his mind, coming together as a community is really, if we all just don't bow down and do what she says and just get on her program, we won't have any problems. And you know, we just need to get along and come together. Like, it's not substantive, but this is what three generations of bastards raising bastards, absent, purposeful patriarchy, this is what it looks like. You have an entire community being bullied, shamed, yelled at, shut down, silenced, disrespected, and treated like children. Because when big mama's in charge, right? Like when the matriarchy is given control like this, this is what you get. Now this same mayor, I saw somebody put it in the chat, was found guilty of improperly using a grant that she received under the CARES Act. And I want you to take a look at the lack of self-awareness here. Take a look at this. She's already proved she's going to do what she thinks she can do and what she can get away with. She's already said she's the mayor. Harvey Creech is a proud East Point resident of 50 plus years. Upset to learn the mayor is now in the news again. We don't need it. We don't need any more publicity than what we've got right now. This afternoon, Mayor Owens was arraigned on a charge of false pretenses, a five-year felony, accused of lying on a COVID relief application in 2020 and receiving a $10,000 CARES Act grant from Macomb County. The charges come about as a result of obtaining these funds uh, on the application process, as well as um, some of the information that was provided that wasn't true. Prosecutor Peter Lucido says the grant was for an LLC Owens owns. According to public record, the mayor has four businesses in her name. Do you know what exactly she said that was a lie or was not true? In the... Well, I'm not going to get into the details in specifics because the case is still pending. But in generic wise that, you know, she's made false statements of fact on an application. Owens is due back in court next month, and Lucido says the office continues to make corruption a focus. Residents say they want answers. If she is ended up being found guilty on a five-year felony, uh, what do you think should happen to her as, as mayor? She needs to be removed. Simple as that. She's innocent until proven guilty. But unfortunately, you know, when it is a high-ranking official, such as an elected official, we begin tonight with that courtroom clash between the mayor of East Point and the judge during her sentencing hearing today. Monique Owens is now sentenced to six months probation. She also has to perform 100 hours of community service for misusing COVID-19 relief money for her personal business. 7 Action News reporter Sarah Michaels is outside Macomb County Court 
with how Owens caused the judge to be outraged inside that courtroom. In the four years that Monique Owens has been East Point's mayor, she has been charged with fraud and sued by residents. You could say that it's been a rocky road, much like court Thursday morning. Even though I pled what I pled, I know that I am not a fraud. Even though in September, East Point Mayor Monique Owens pled no contest for fraudulently applying for a grant, Thursday, at her sentencing, she said to cameras, Don't believe the application that you have heard about me. The Macomb County judge didn't take that well. Are you talking to the TV or are you talking to me as the judge? Because I don't think you're talking to me as the judge. And you're really telling me you did absolutely nothing wrong and therefore we should, this case should be proceeding differently. This fall, the 39-year-old mayor was charged for falsely stating on a 2020 CARES Act grant that her business, Naturally Funny Talent Agency, was 51% veteran owned. It's not and that it had more than 100 employees. It doesn't. Owens received $10,000 from the grant and in September was ordered to pay that money back in restitution, which she did. The crime adds to Owens' tumultuous time in office. She's also being sued by East Point residents for suppressing citizen comments in 2022. Are you disappointed in the mayor? Very, very disappointed. Owens made history in 2019 as the city's first black mayor. Tanja Price says that she has lived in East Point for 10 years and was thrilled to vote for Owens four years ago. Now, after years of drama, she says that she's glad to see Owens' term coming to an end. I found that very offensive. I think that if you do something wrong, if you really have a change in heart, a change in your ways. What's the smile about? Price is referring to this smile in court Thursday. I reached out to Owens for comment and did not hear back. The judge ultimately sentenced her to 100 days of community service and six months probation, along with a few choice words. Personally, I think you are a disappointment to our community and to the citizens of East Point. And this week, East Point has elected a new mayor, Michael Kleinfeld. He has said that his top priority as mayor will be to improve the perception of East Point. At the Macomb County Courthouse. Sarah Michaels, 7 Action News. All right. So let me go ahead and engage with that clip that I just showed you. It was rather long and a lot happened in that clip. The point, though, that I want to drive home, you guys, is these women, they submit to no one, right? They are literally, they are a law unto themselves, right? It is a constant power struggle with them, these types of women, they are so toxic. They are so rebellious. They are the spark and the catalyst of their own destruction. And they don't even care. Like these are your, these are your hungry for power types because they use power to validate themselves and then to silence the cries of their inner misery, right? They try to silence their personal inadequacy and to overcome and overcompensate for their series of bad decisions and poor choices that they've made over the course of their life. So this, this encompasses, this is the ratcheting behavior that I've described on previous live streams. Like this ratcheting right here, she sat there smiling during her sentencing. And not just that, but she refused to demonstrate or accept any sort of accountability for what she did. But instead, she her default was to gaslight those who were listening. And she told them, you know, don't listen to what's being said about her as if it hasn't already been proven what she did, as if people are just making this up. This is how you know that not, she's not just a ratchet team, but she's a narcissist. Because she cannot manage her misery. And what she does is th she just creates an alternate reality. The world is not how it is. The world is how she wishes it to be. Th there's nothing wrong with her. She is not the problem. It's the judge, right? It's the judge is wrong. Those people out there are wrong. Everyone is wrong but her.
She's not a fraud. And you're just supposed to act like there is nothing to see here. There is nothing going on. She is the victim, the poor single mom, black woman who's the first mayor. And it's the white supremacist system. That's what it is. It's the white supremacist system, system that just doesn't want her to win. That's the narrative that you're supposed to walk away believing. But here's the truth. The truth is that these women are lost, not just spiritually. They're lost emotionally. They don't have, even pagans can have the emotional maturity to realize, okay, this is not going to end well for me. So I just, I need to move and navigate and do something a little different. They can't. These women, they make a series of bad decisions fueled by a desire to just fill a void that only God can fill. Thank you.